who needs the Nikon Z6 III anyway? Hey, thanks for tuning in. Today I want to talk about the Nikon Z6 III, some of the specifications and how important some of these specs that we're getting uh, are for the Nikon Z6 III and the future of Nikon, really, in my opinion, in so many ways. So, so much, first, well, let's get one thing off the table. Buying a new, the new Nikon Z6 III is not going to make you a better photographer if you're already it's not going to improve your skills necessarily. Uh, you know, gear acquisition syndrome is something that we all have to fight. So be sure if you're going to get the Nikon Z6 III that it's really going to benefit you. So I want to talk for a minute about who it's going to benefit and how. And it so depends on a couple of key things that we don't really under, we don't know yet. And let's talk about specifically the sensor. So the sensor... Let's say, let, we'll take some use cases. Let's say the sensor is 24 megapixels and they've improved the efficiency of it. It's a little faster readout speed, but it's not fast enough to remove the rolling shutter, right? It's it's faster, but let's say it's just, it's not going to completely move, remove rolling shutter. Like um, the, the readout speed is just not fast enough because maybe it's not a stack sensor. Right. If if that's the use, if if the Z63 comes out and the sensor is 24, not 33, and it's not super fast, but it's improved, but it's good, you know, then is it really going to help uh, photographers who use the Z62 for landscape photography or product photography? Uh, even even video photography, if you if you use it for videos, uh, astro still live photography, even even portraiture. If you're inside the studio and you typically shoot, you know f five point six or and higher, is a twenty four megapixel sensor that's not super fast and not stacked gonna really help you? Not. Not a whole lot, not a whole lot. But if the sensor is 24 and it's not super fast, but it has the X Speed 7 processor, which we think it will, and the focus is dramatically improved, then the Nikon Z6 III in this particular use case will really help people who do uh, shallow depth of field uh, photography, especially with people. Um, or any type of any type of situation where you've got shall really shallow depth of field, which could be in certain wildlife situations with long lenses and subjects that are pretty close and things like that, or do you want animal face or eye detection? All of that, any kind of photography like that, the Nikon Z63 is going to really help you. It's also going to help anybody who's doing uh, sports, anything that any in, tracking anything that's fast, right? The Nikon Z63 is going to be great. But consider, consider that particular use case. There's a whole bunch of people, a whole bunch of photographers that kind of get left out because it's just slightly better improved 24 megapixel sensor. But now let's take a different use case and let's say that Nikon either puts out a 24 megapixel sensor and it's stacked or maybe, I don't know, I, I'm not sure they can get it fast enough if it's not stacked. So let's let's kind of go with a stacked sensor sort of a scenario. If it's a 24 megapixel sensor and it's stacked, or even, and even if it's more megapixels, we'll talk about that in a second, then rolling shutter situations could be dramatically improved, and then and that increases the, the, the number of use cases, right? The number of situations where photographers could use the camera because of you know, certain video and the situations and things like that, or, or even panning stills and things like that. So um, if it's a stack sensor, then more photographers will, will want it. 
So let's take another use case. Now let's say it's a 33 or 34 megapixel camera. It is absolutely true. I, I ran a poll about 60% of photographers really want the Nikon Z6 III to have 33, 34 megapixels, as long as it can retain, you know, essentially retain the same, uh, you know, the same low light performance. Why do they want that? Because there's a lot of people who shoot landscapes and real estate and product photography, astro, right? And they just would love to have a few more megapixels, right? So if the Z63 comes out and it's and it's a, a bit more, then the the number of photographers that are going to benefit from the Z63 is going to get even even bigger. Now, some of those some of those photographers will still upgrade even if it's 24, and I get that. Uh, I'm just saying, just in general, the most important thing that we look. There's so many things we know. It's going to be an X Speed Seven. It's going to be faster. The focus is going to be great. Like all these things are, are true. The one thing that we don't really know is how fast the sensor is going to be and how many megapixels it's going to be. And that is the point of this video. Honestly, if you're interested in the Nikon Z63, if you're in, if you're not in the, you know, in this, the group of photographers that do shallow depth of field and really dependent on the face eye detection, if you're not kind of in that category, and your landscape, your astro, your product photography, your real estate, maybe you're looking for more megapixels, or you know, rolling shutter improvements or things. Honestly, you're sort of just waiting, right? You're just going to be like, is it really going to help me? And it may, honestly, it may not. It may not. So it's going to be super. The most important thing that we all want to know is uh, the sensor and how fast. What is the readout speed of the sensor and how many megapixels it is? And that'll determine for a bunch of people whether or not they're going to upgrade to the Nikon C63. And then there's also price. So people who are super interested in the camera might get priced out of it. I think, this is my opinion on the price, uh, it has to compete with the Canon R6 II. The Canon R6 II is priced at $2299, right? $2300 US. I'm thinking the, the Z6 III has got to come in at that or slightly below that price point. And so the, the specs, the rumors suggest that the Z6 III can shoot 20 uh, raw frames per second. The Canon R6 II can do 40, I think. So there are a couple of areas where the Canon um, excels. And, you know, but, but there's a bunch of other areas. I mean, the video specs look great, look better. So anyway, I think the price is going to be around $21.99. Um, or right at twenty two ninety nine, but we'll see if it's if it's a stack sensor. Then maybe maybe it'll maybe that's that, that'll be the a big enough di differentiator to charge more than the Canon R six two. So we'll see. Uh, hopefully, we'll know something in the next month or two. Maybe by the end of March, we'll have an announcement. Uh, certainly, the rumors continue to mount, which is great. It, gives us an indication that something's brewing there but uh anyway we'll see leave a comment below and let me know where you are with the nikon z63 are you completely firmly decided you want to uh, purchase it are you on the fence why or why not that would be great also we have a facebook page specifically dedicated i'll put a link in the description below uh, specifically for the nikon z63 and uh, you can join that group and join in the discussion in more detail. We will be reviewing the Nikon Z63 as soon as it's out in every aspect we possibly can. Uh, and the group is dedicated to, to that camera. And that's all it'll ever be dedicated to. Because personally, I think the Nikon Z63 is kind of a one-of-a-kind uh, body um, in the Nikon lineup. It deserved its own, its own page. So again, uh, thanks for watching. Please, uh, if you like this video, you like these kinds of videos, uh, subscribe, uh, hit like, share, and all that great stuff. It uh, helps out the channel. Thanks so much for watching, and we will catch you on the next video. Mm -hmm.